Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 53 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. Today, uh, I am working on making an Infinity Range Booster right now. That is pretty much my stated goal as we speak. So I should have an Ender Casing. I should have uh, one of the, uh, these, Phantom Booster. Check, 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 check. Which means I've got everything... Uh, with the exception of the six Quantum Entangled Singularities, which I make uh, by dropping one Singularity and one Ender Dust and cause an explosion. So uh, Ender Dust is made... Ender Dust is made... Uh, Ender Pearl Dust, I guess? It's just an Ender Pearl Macerator. Okay, cool. Uh, so three of those should work out. So Ender Pearl Dust. Yeah, okay, I already had one, but that's okay. We'll live. Uh, let's grab, we should have three Singularities and three Ender Pearl Dusts. Now, I don't know if we have to do those one at a time or if it will be smart enough to, like, you know, not require one at a time. But I'm going to get three TNT uh, and a couple buttons. And we will... Uh, Light up some explosions. This is uh, this is my goal right now, is to get this up and running. And if I get this running, it'll mean that I'll have access to my wireless uh, AE system from pretty much anywhere. So I'm just going to pop out over here somewhere and find a nice place where there's a little baby skeleton hanging out. Because those things are awesome. Uh, and let's just, you know, dig in the ground. It should be as simple as just dropping one of these and one of these and sticking some TNT nearby. And standing back. And we should get two Quantum Entangled Singularities, which is cool. Uh, so we just do that a couple more times and we're good to go. So uh, again, more explosions. I figured you guys uh, would want to be here for the explosions, right? Everybody likes an explosion. Nice. Is there tiny TNT in this pack? There is tiny TNT from Fighter Logistics. This does like less kind of damage to the terrain, and it's in fairness what I should be doing. But, oh well. I figured nobody would complain about slightly larger than necessary explosions. Uh, and as a reminder, each of these singularities are quantum entangled with each other. Uh, what that basically means is that um, they don't stack because they are linked to each other. So this quantum singularity is linked to this quantum singularity, and this one is linked to this one, uh, and this one is linked to this one, which is why uh, they don't stack. And I bet if I did F3H, we'd be able to see advanced tooltips. Uh, there's an MBT tag on there. Uh, and if we look, does it show me MBT tag? There we go. So it gives you like a unique identity frequency on these, and the frequency is different for this one and this one. 102L, 800L, 901L. So these, basically, they're unique in a certain way. Cool? So, and that's how they're unique, which is why they don't stack with each other, which is also uh, going to be useful later if we ever decide that we want to actually use these um, for something other than the Infinity Booster card, which we may. So in theory, I should be able to do this, and that'll get me the Infinity Booster card, which is excellent. Um, now, double in theory, uh, I should no longer need range upgrades in this thing, right? So if I take those out, it's got a 16 block range, which means you shouldn't work out here. But um, if I stick my infinity booster in here, can you now work anywhere, in any dimension, at any location? That is awesome. Including on the moon, for example. Let's actually not visit the moon until I put on a spacesuit. Now we can dial up the moon. Uh, moon 13, the moon, right? And before I go there, yeah, I do have my advanced charge border. Just double checking. You never know. Um, so in theory, this thing should totally work on the moon. Hey, what's up? I have an infinite range access to my AE system. That is cool. Now, there may come a point uh, where I decide to actually, like, set up things... That will, uh, like the, the, whatchamacallit's from Applied Aerogistics? The, that use those to, like, 
get an AE system on, for example, my space station. And the reason I would want to do that is so that I could like auto craft and import export bus on the space station. So this will work for my inventory, but I couldn't, for example, on the space station somehow um, have the ability to auto craft and auto stock items in certain inventories. But we'll see what we need. Because I don't know. Uh, I legitimately don't know because I haven't gotten... So what I've been doing with Advanced Rocketry, because I haven't played it that much, is I've been getting through the mod by testing it in my single player world before I record. Um, I haven't done that yet for the um, Warp Core. So to-do list today is to figure out how Warp Cores work. And uh, that sounds like a fun time. So I know that we said at the end of last episode we would need uh, a Warp Core at the very least. I don't know if there's other things we need, but I'm guessing. So let's see what the guide says. For age of engineering let's do that so in the space age and remember mechanical age comes next but we can't do this until after you have zirconium um so space age the goal of this age is to get four new ores you need to progress mercury tantalum zirconium and cadmium um and yada 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 your first destination is the moon yada 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 uh i do want to maybe try out the co2 scrubber thing uh, and carving collection cartridges. I might want to try that on the space station. So let's do that on camera real quick. And then we're going to check out the warp core multi-block fueled with dilithium crystals. Um, so to select a destination, you need a warp controller. Look up in JEI which planet has the ore you need. Basically, the four ores are on four different planets in our solar system. You can also go to a different solar system where every planet has all four ores, but in much rarer quantity. As a side note, there are also two moons that can fulfill your needs for titanium if you run out of it. Um, so... All that said, let's do the following today, if we can get it all done. I would like to make um, CO2 scrubbers containing carbon collection cartridges, and then I want to make a warp core multi-block and a warp core controller. Cool. So uh, CO2 two scrubbers. Uh, did we make one of these yet? I don't think so. Um, it requires a steel fan. Steel plates times four. Uh, and I think... It also needs a motor. And then finally, it needs some kind of ingot. Uh, so what ingot was that? I don't know. Uh, CO2 scrubber is a carbon brick, which seems easy enough. So let's just get some wood. Six of them. And induction furnace that up. Why use no smelt into charcoal? Yeah, I should be able to smelt wood into charcoal. How about over here? I'm starting to remember that the only way to get actual charcoal in this pack was a coke furnace. But it says it should work. Or maybe it's only forestry woods that work. No, that looks like regular birch wood and jungle wood. Oak wood, yeah. Alloy smeltery. That should totally be working. That's funny. Oh, I don't know what's not working. Um, oh, hey, you don't belong there. So charcoal. What was the other thing in the arc furnace? Carbon brick. Uh, that is carbon dust, which we can get from a grinder. And actually, additions cruster. Uh, okay, so let's try that. I don't even know if we have an actually additions crusher, but we will rapidly find out. Restonia crystals times. Where's my Restonia crystals? Oh, because I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Maybe not 100. There we go. And, uh, because I don't think I've actually made one of these before. So iron casing, I just need an advanced machine casing, which I can get from here. Pretty sure I taught you how these work, yeah. Nice. Let's see if you'll get what I need. Cool. Uh, you're just going to need power at some point somewhere. I'm not even going to hook this up to anywhere, like, for real, because I don't know that I need this beyond once. But this should get me the carbon thing that I need, and then it goes into an arc furnace. That's just getting me coal dust. Carbon brick. Carbon dust from base metals. 
Yeah. Coal should get me carbon dust. Or in a crusher. But that was the... Well, let's see what happens if I throw this in here. All right, back in a minute once I figure out how to make carbon bricks. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I'm cooking up charcoal in the Coke oven. Uh, and if this works, I'll probably wind up making more just because. Um, but the other thing I'm making right now is a rolling machine. Uh, and that I should have everything for as of this moment. So we will see if I appropriately built all the stuff I need for a rolling machine. So let's put the rolling machine like here. And we'll see what it looks like in terms of size. Oh, wow, hello, that is a weird structure. Isn't that a weird looking structure? That's a weird looking structure. And the rolling machine's like kind of like inside of it. Uh, so where do I want you then? Like, let's move this back so that he's more, yeah. So it only has one block. Let's move him over one. So like here? Nope, over one more. It's weird because it's not centered, but that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's see what machine blocks we've got. I see two plug or a regular plug. So I have a power plug here. Uh, fluid input hatch. Machine structure, which we needed six of. Output hatch. Output hatch. Machine structure, motor. Copper coils times two. Uh, rolling machine itself, which I want to put facing this way, I guess. Input hatch, input hatch, structure, 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 structure. Check. Hey, that's a pretty fancy looking machine. Cool. Uh, you're going to need power, so let's get some conduits. Okay, and uh, power input plug is here. So you can kind of basically go there. Power, power. Cover it up, cover it up, cool. Um, and then these are your input hatches and your output hatches are over here on the side. Um, so what I was making this for was uh, we're also going to need a carbon collection cartridge, which needs six iron sheets, which is an iron plate rolled in a rolling machine. So let's get like a stack of these iron plates, uh, which shouldn't be too hard to get. Iron plate, let's say 40 for now, just because I don't know how many of these we're going to need eventually. But so let's make a bunch up ahead of time because I imagine this machine is probably quite slow, uh, would be my guess. I might be wrong, but most of the advanced rocketry machines are kind of slow in their processing. So I figured, eh, we'll get a bunch up ahead and then we'll be cool. So drop these into your input hatch and power on the machine. And we should see some fancy things happening. Right? Uh, hey, where did all, okay, there they are, iron plates. This is the part where you work. Carbon collection process, iron sheets, iron plate from Mr. Engineering, iron plate from Deck Reborn, iron plate from IC2. Yes, yeah, so this should absolutely be working. In a rolling machine, should get me iron sheets. I don't suppose you'll have to be like one at a time, right? And these are absolutely your input hatches. Let's try this input hatch for whatever reason. Does it matter? Shouldn't. Oh, do we need some kind of liquid in there? Hold on. There's a fluid import. So do we need some kind of liquid in our rolling machine? I'm gonna go on a limb here and assume that this HTO H2O tank means water. Is that what we need? Do we need to pipe water into this dude? That would be kind of cool. Cause I'm already piping water over here. So what if we got a tank real quick? Uh, one of you. We let that fill up. I don't know how much water we need. Wow, oh, that filled up really quick, didn't it? Hey, wow, that was that was the solution. All right, neat. So that was easy. Uh, I don't know how much we need, but you're gonna go there and you're gonna drain down. And then we'll put these guys in there. So I guess my question of what liquid do I need is answered by the big letters H2O on the front of the machine. Not used to that. <laughs> It is kind of cool watching these machines run though. Seeing the end get go into the rollers and then come out as a flattened sheet. 
Like, that's pretty spiffy. Not bad at all. All right, so now we should be able to get our carbon cartridge. And I assume that by now we've also managed uh, to make up six carbon, which hopefully I can turn into that carbon block. Yay! All right. So for all my attempts, uh, so cartridge, carbon collection cartridge. So in theory, if I head to my space station, which may or may not have oxygen going on. All right, just because I was getting a little bit low on oxygen there. <laughs> Things were getting a little scary. Um, you, let's set you to um, always run. And then uh, let's put a CO2 scrubber here with that. Okay, so you need more power, but you get the gist. Uh, do I have a thing in here? All right, so a capacitor maybe? So in theory, this should cause my oxygen to run a lot. Nice. So that seems to not be burning through quite as quickly as if we had a CO2 scrubber. Yeah, see, that's definitely, so CO2 scrubbers reduce the speed at which we hit that. I wonder if these stack. I don't know, we'll play with it later. What I really want to do today is a warp core. Uh, the other thing I want to check is uh, if I get a door, which I can totally do this, right? Do we not have wood? So atmosphere is zero. What if I do that? Doors, I guess, don't count as solid blocks. So that is not working for us. So there's no atmosphere here, and it's not even trying to pump oxygen in here because that's not a solid block. See, now we're pressurized, now we're not. Okay, cool, good to know. Um, what about glass? So what we could do to pressurize this is use ineffable glass. This should count as a solid block, and now we're pressurized. Sweet! Um, but wow, are we burning through oxygen. Even with CO2 scrubbers, we are burning through oxygen like nobody's business. I don't even know if it's worth wasting my time because we don't produce oxygen that quickly. I feel like it's not worth even wasting the time. Goodbye, doors. <laughs> um, it's possible that you'll want to like surround this thing with CO2 scrubbers and it would make it much less painful. But even even that, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. Vacuum at 1 ATM. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth the oxygen thing. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. For now, uh, let's look at a warp core. Uh, so let's go back home. Yay. Uh, and warp core is the uh, next order of operations for us, right? Now, uh, I remember that we would need a lot of stuff for this. Specifically, we need 15 blocks of titanium. Uh, now, I did kick off a bunch of titanium crafting last episode. So I should be able to make 15 blocks of this stuff. Close, close. Uh, can I get 10 more? Yeah, totally can. Nice, okay, so that's good. Uh, so we'll get those things crafted, in and uh, we can switch you guys back to this. So yeah, I almost feel like the oxygen thing, unless I'm doing something really, really wrong, is like not even worth making the attempt of anymore. Oh, you know what we need to do? More of these guys. So let me get those real quick. What are they, rods it's called? I'm gonna do this off camera because you guys have uh, kind of seen me do this already. Graphite electrodes. So I need some hop graphite. So rumor has it, and I'm not sure how accurate this is, but rumor has it that I for 18 levels, it looks like, which, by the way, my experience thing is down here now. Uh, for 18 levels, I can get Unbreaking 3, and in theory, I should be able to combine these. Nice. So that's cool. You can enchant graphite electrodes. Sweet. So let's uh, get another 20 levels, get another Unbreaking book.
Another 20 levels. And another Unbreaking Book. And that leaves me with five, and I remember needing three. Man, traveling around by staff is not as easy as it looks. So that should be enough to enchant the others. Now how's my coke dust situation? Taking a while, you need a stack and a half of coke dust. So that should be another graphite electrode. All right, so I'll get me the hop graphite, which we then cook up. Nice, we get the rod. And then we can enchant it. And this will basically just make it last longer. Cool trick. Back in a minute when you're done processing another half stack of cooked dust. And now you guys should be good to go. Sweet. And it's processing. Beautiful. Back in a minute. All right. So our cutting machine should be cutting up that thing. That is cool. And that's necessary for the warp core. I already auto-crafted all the other things we need for the warp core. Nice. We've got a warp core. Uh, so a warp core, 15 titanium blocks. Uh, and then we need four machine structures, two blocks of gold, and an input hatch. All right, so the blocks of gold should be easy. An input hatch should be easy. Cool. Um, four structures. So you're probably crafting right now the chrome ingots. So let's do four structure blocks. And uh, again, this drives me nuts that I have to go manually do this. It's killing me. It's killing me. There's probably a way to like round robin it into something, something, I don't know, magic. But, um, you know, we'll see. So that should get our structure block times two, three, four. Let's go, Buster. You're probably still waiting on some more steel. So in theory now, we should have everything we need to make a warp core for our station. The other thing we're going to need is the warp core controller, uh, which is going to be need two green circuits, a structure, and a user interface, and steel plates times four. Two green circuits from advanced rocketry. A structure block. And the user interface. Back in a moment. There we go. Warp core controller. Sweet. And I'm guessing that I need to link it. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I kind of want my satellite of love. Dial once. You guys off. You guys on. Uh, and also, I can get a jetpack now, which I might. Let me, let me, let me, let me get a jetpack. So, in theory, this should be a jetpack that I can then upgrade my armor with. So, let's put our armor there, and now I should have a jetpack. Sweet. And number five is what I bound to turning it on and off. Now, I'm going to need hydrogen in order to fill this thing. So we're going to want another gas charge pad real quick. And this is what we're going to use to fill up our hydrogen. So in theory, back in a sec. All right, so that's gas charge pad. Which I should be able to fuel up with hydrogen. And now the real question is, do I need a separate tank? I might. So I think, what's a pressure tank look like? Two steel sheets. I get one of those from a steel plate. Let me try and make one of these real quick. I want a regular pressure tank, so steel plate. I'm going to get two just because it says I need two, but I actually didn't need two for the iron version of the tank. So we'll see what happens. So you should be making me a steel plate, which you can see going out there. Sweet. And we'll see if, uh, if I'm right about this. Did you take that steel sheet? Not yet. So you might actually need two of those. So he's doing something with it. I'm not sure what he's doing, but we'll find out. See? Pressure tank. Told you I needed one. 
So I think I can put the pressure tank here. And that'll give me an extra pressure tank. And now I've got a hydrogen tank. Nice. And hey, look, I can fly. Sweet. So hydrogen used for jetpack um, and oxygen used for breathing. That is good times. Now there's apparently like a hover upgrade and there's other upgrades in terms of like speed, but um, I don't, I haven't figured out how that hover upgrade works to be totally honest with you guys. So uh, yeah, and I think I need an extra machine structure because I used one by mistake. Hey, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, so we should be good to make that uh, warp core now. And we should be able to good to fly around, which is awesome, because flying is good uh, when you're in a void dimension, which is effectively what we're in, right? Uh, so I've got my way home if I need to. I've got my staff of traveling, and I've got my jetpack, my, my spacesuit on. So we should be able to teleport here. You know what? Um, let's bring a bunch of bricks with me. Can I? Cool. And let's also get our wand. And I'm gonna build off camera and we'll be right back. All right, so uh, what I've done is build something of an extra base area out here. I wanna get my hollow projector to tell me what my warp core looks like in terms of sizing. So there's a couple ways we could like play this out, right? Like this could be our warp core room. Um, and I don't know what other rooms we need because I don't really know enough about this mod to be able to say like, oh, and we also put, I don't know, astro body data process, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what half these machines do. I'm not even gonna lie about it. Microwave receiver? I don't know. Does that go on my space station? Beats me. Uh, but at the very least, we're gonna build a warp core in here and we'll find out. And we'll kind of go from there, right? So what's a warp core look like? A warp core is a three by three by three. So that's not terrible. So I think I can just build it in here like this. Oh boy, hello. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How do I go down? All right, going down is harder than it looks. <laughs> we need to be a little careful with this jetpack thing. Um, so warp core building time. Let's do it now. Uh, so I'm just going to move this stuff here and we can just grab everything. So we will want our warp core. That's a warp controller. This is our actual warp core. These are blocks of titanium. So titanium block, titanium block, titanium block, titanium block, 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 block. And then up one level we want, uh, it looks like a block of gold goes in the middle here. And then machine structures are here, 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 and here. And then the input hatch goes on the top. Why did you say I need two blocks of gold? Because I feel like that's a lie. Definitely claims that I'm missing something. So what did I miss? Oh, so there's where the block of gold is. <laughs> Dire derp. <gasps> wow, that's a fan. Wow, that is fancy. That is fancy. Look at that fancy pantsness. That is super fancy. Whoa, look at that. That is cool. Core status, fuel cost, nowhere to go. Uh, select planet. Oh, look, hey, this is nifty. Look at all this stuff. Jupiter, Venus, Uranus, Mercury, Earth. Wow, nifty, nifty, nifty. I will say this is cool stuff, huh? Uh, hey, that's cool. Is it telling me about... Ah, that's cool. Oh, hello. Uh, Sol, number of planets, 11. Alpha Centauri, that's nifty. Wow, uh, cool. So I assume the warp controller automatically found the warp core? It looks like it did. So let's do this. If you're ready to go, uh, let's look at, so according to the guide, the four things we need are mercury, tantalum, zirconium, and cadmium. So let's start right down the list, right? So mercury, or can I assume it's gonna be found on mercury? Haha. <laughs> That was not a uh, stretch. I had a feeling that would be the case. So let's select planet. 
we will choose Mercury as our destination. Select Mercury. Fuel cost, 114. So is that how many dilithium crystals we need? So in a crusher, we get dust. And in a crystallizer, we get crystals. Oh boy, don't tell me this is going to be like one of those, like it takes a million years things, right? So uh, if I wanted 120 dust, right, start that up. Let's, uh, let's teleport back home for a minute. Uh, you guys... So yeah, I assume that I then put 117-ish, oh, that's cool. As it's orbiting, it's modifying the fuel cost a little bit. Interesting, uh, very cool. Uh, I shouldn't close this room. Does that sound like a smart thing to do? Uh, so what I might wind up doing, where did you go? Did you go into my inventory? Oh, there it is. Silly low gravity. Let's, uh, let's make this room have like, roominess to it as in it should be an actual room cool and uh, we will put the warp controller right here does that sound cool nice and look it remember my destination sweet all right so let's come back in a minute after I finish building up a room all right, so vacuum 00 ATM? I don't know if I believe that, because technically this should be an enclosed space, unless this isn't a full solid block, but it should be. So we should, you know, we should be able to get pressure in this room if we so deem. We just need more oxygen, but that's fine. Do I have any oxygen handy? We do have one liquid oxygen can. Could I get you in here by chance to the liquid, to that? Just want to make sure. Hey, yeah, pressurized, 1 ATM, breathable. Neat. It goes like crazy, but whatever. All right, uh, so yeah, let's get home and start crystallizing that dilithium. So to do that, we're going to first want to take a nap. Do, do, do. And then we're going to want to get those dilithium dusts. and get them in the crystallizer, which I remember being a fast machine. So I really hope that you don't take too long to process. Um, so spoiler alert, this is gonna take a while. It's cool to see the dilithium forming, um, but it definitely takes a while. Okay. So back in a minute, I want to verify that I'm doing this right too. So we've got eight, only 110 more to go. So while I'm waiting for that to cook up, I'm working on a couple other things that probably aren't super exciting yet, but we'll get to them. Um, now I have no idea what mercury ore is going to be used for. And as, you know what, that's actually like a really good question. What is mercury going to be used for? So that turns into liquid mercury by smelting it or powdered mercury ore which can be used to smelt into liquid mercury, uh, which can be used for what? Mercury bucket, mithril blend, electrolytic core. So that's definitely be required for some mechanism stuff. Um, powdered mercury ore, which can be used for what? Cooked back into liquid mercury ore, okay. Uh, does this mercury bucket do anything? Nope. Uh, Mithril ingots. I assume they're going to be used for something. What that is, I couldn't tell you. Looks like mithril plates are a thing. I don't know. I don't know. I'm assuming we'll need it for something. Definitely something ish. Something, something. You know what. So I'm thinking for completion's sake, we should probably visit every planet um, in the solar system. Uh, and I assume that we're also going to need to do so. 
So we should be able to make a power cell card now. Hooray! Uh, and I've just made myself a new power cell, which means I can plop this dude down. Uh, you are unconnected, but if I go down here, you should be able to be connected. So I should be able to just put this in here and link it. And now this is link ID 1. I don't think I actually did this on camera last time. So now if I... Oh, you're on... That's right. I need to put you in the wrong slot. Let's link him again. Link ID 1. So that's the slot to, like, get him linked. And this is the slot to say you're linked to things now. Set you to output on all sides. And then, um, how's my, this thing? I'm making a matter receiver for Mercury. So my plan is to fly to Mercury. We'll put a matter receiver on Mercury so we can get there. Now, I don't know if it's going to use up the 120 dilithium crystals that I'm cooking up over here. So far, we're at 38. So we're about a quarter of the way there, which is awfully slow, but it's getting there. I wish I could speed this thing up, but I don't think there's any way. Short of making more crystallizers, which is totally possible. But it's gotten me thinking that I should probably think about auto mining the moon to get more and more dilithium. But we'll see. So what I'm going to do then is wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next episode and we will have a matter receiver ready to bring with us to Mercury. And we will also have enough dilithium crystals. Again, I'm not sure if they get used up when I warp. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works in Star Trek, right? Like dilithium crystals, they don't get used up. So maybe they get used up as a fuel source when we warp. Maybe they don't. We'll find out next episode. Uh, and if they do, I'll be somewhat stranded my space station on Mercury. Um, and if that's the case, then I'm going to have to matter teleporter home and, uh, you know, leave my space station orbiting Mercury, go to the moon, get more dilithium, process it, um, and maybe start working on a auto mining quarry type thing for the moon. Because I don't think there's any way to get dilithium um, out of... Yeah, so it only exists on the moon. And in, in decent amounts, to be fair. Um, but, you know, there's no way to make this thing, which is my main source of mining right now, bring up uh, ore. Hey, wow, we're filling stuff up. You can see I set up a new uh, storage drawer here, and I set the priority to negative one. So it should fill this thing up all the way before it starts putting anything in these cells. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. So let's wrap up the episode here, come back next time, and like I said, we will get everything going. For now, Dial 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.